Assalamu alaikum. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. Well, this is going to be a fun presentation because it's going to be more of a conversation than a proper presentation, uh, just the way I like it in general. Um, but I really want to talk to you guys more about how you can help Palestine from an individual level across the world. Um, but before we even start, quick little backstory. And most people don't know this, but I grew up in Pleasanton, which is why I can call as much at home. Um, and also, I want to get to one quick principle before we even get into the concept of how you can help Palestine and how you can technically, you know, be a part of the change. Um, so I, I think one moving principle that I always stick with is the concept of just one du'a. You just need one du'a from someone across the world and you can get to Jannah. That's all that matters. You just need to do something, whether it's giving someone a coffee, whether it's paying for someone's parking, or whether it's like making du'a for them in like, you know, the haram or something. But you just need one du'a. And so with that in mind, if you can unconditionally help others, you can unconditionally get good coming your way, whether it's in this life or the next. And so with that principle, I'm just going to dive into what Boycat is as a whole. But Boycat is kind of our spin on how you can help Palestine out from anywhere across the globe. So really quickly, let's just dive into the problem that we kind of face right now. And the problem from a, you know, just a general standpoint is we want to shop ethically and we want to make sure that whatever money we spend doesn't support the occupation and it doesn't support the genocide that's happening to our brothers and sisters in, in Philistine. But if you think about it, there's really three main problems when, that you kind of have to like tackle when you, when you think about this cause, right? There's a ton of information out there and there's a ton of misinformation out there and no one really knows what's going on. Like, you want to help out and you want to know what brands are supporting, what products you're supporting, whatever Whatever you're, wherever you're spending your money, you want to make sure it's going to the right place. And I think the second thing with that first part is it's so reliant on news cycles. Like how many of us are actually remember the things that were going on in Syria or the things that are going on in Congo or Sudan or the Uyghurs? Like it's only, it only comes to mind when things are, you know, in the news. And we want to be non-reliant on that because if we can continuously do the right thing, then we don't have to rely on the news to help us and support these causes that we're going with, right? Um, the second thing that I want to think about when we you know, tackle this idea of how do we shop properly, how do we make sure we spend our money in the right way, is once you know what to avoid, what do you actually buy, right? There's like, if you go to a Starbucks, if you want to avoid Starbucks, there's probably like 50 other coffee shops in the area that serve better coffee anyways. If you want to buy something beside Coca-Cola, like there's like 10 other sodas like popped out of nowhere in the past year that you can buy. But did you know that? And then the last thing is, do you really have an incentive, right? Like, obviously, there's an incentive of let's do good and let's support, you know, Philistine. But sometimes that's not enough for people. Like, they'll be like, oh, it's just a couple dollars. I'm just spending this. I'm, I'm buying X, Y, or Z. But what if in reality it's like all that can add up and there's actually an incentive to try something new? Like, what if you could get Salam's Cola or Gaza Cola or Palestine Cola for, like, 50% cheaper than if you're buying Coca-Cola? Would you switch? And I think that's what we wanted to solve when we were building Boycat. Um, so, you know, that's, that's like the thing, that's like the answer I give to every investor or every pitch or every VC or any, anyone that's talking business. But I think this is the real problem, right? As like, as Muslims, we need to care about where our money is going. And there's not an easy way to do that because we're so reliant on whatever the government gives us, whatever these major corporations give us, whatever these like nine major like core conglomerates own like, you know, 800 companies and we are so reliant on them for our daily necessity. And we know that our voices are silent because sometimes it feels like if we stop spending $100 a month, it doesn't actually do anything. But the reality is it compounds really, really fast. Um, and we need to speak the language that these governments and these corporations speak and it's money. We know that we've processed it. We know that we've, we've shared things on social media. We know that we've you know, had talks at different massages, we've had, you know, rallies around, like, the U.S., even around the globe, like, when I was in the U.K. speaking about this as well, and, like, you know, really bringing it out in, in that area, we've had protests of, like, thousands and thousands of people, and, like, the government still gave weapons and money to all these companies. So what do we have to do? And we have to, we have to speak the language that they speak, which is money. And at the same time, it's the only thing that we can control, because they can't force you to buy something. Only you can buy something. And they can't force you to avoid something, only you can avoid something. And so, if you can speak the language they speak, you have the real voice, in my opinion. And so, let's get to the solution. So the solution is Boycat. And you can, I'll, I'll have a QR code so you can download it later and all that fun stuff. But the solution here is, 
if we can consolidate all the information in one spot, and we can verify the information in one spot, so that way you come to a place and you know exactly, oh, if this thing tells me it's good, I can get it. If it tells me it's bad, I can get it. If it shows me alternatives, I can get it. And then that way we start training you to be like, I don't need to rely on news cycles to know where my money is going, right? I don't need to rely on news cycles to be up to date and learn about the cause or whatever that's happening. So we want to train the brain for that. The second is we want to provide all the alternatives for you. So we know how hard it is to avoid things, but if there is a way for us to showcase, you know, the 100 next things you can buy, you have no excuse at that point. And then for us, it's platforming them so much that they give us discounts, alternatives, and whatever. So there's no incentive for you to try something that's bad. You, you can just, you know, purchase what you need to purchase and, you know, you'll get rewarded for it in this life and the next. So the real solution here is, is just that one dua. The reason I bring this up is because if you think about it, and if you do your part and use your voice and you spend your money in the right way, just imagine one kid in Gaza just making dua for you for, you know, aiding the people that could help stop this or, you know, create the ceasefire or do whatever they want to do. But if you think about it in a long-term effect, if all the Muslims and even the non-Muslims unite on this, and we don't want to label ourselves as a Muslim product, we want to label it as a general global product that supports Muslims in the long run. We can go to governments, we can go to corporations with, you know, 30, 40, 50 million people and be like, look, if you don't switch your stance on what you're, you're doing right here, we can move hundreds of millions of dollars away from your, you know, your economy. And that's the language they speak. They would flip so fast. We know that things like Chegg has, you know, have kind of submitted to that. I don't know if you knew this, but Chegg, the study app, study application that every high schooler used in, in the day, they had an office in Tel Aviv. And they actually shut it down this past year because, you know, business was hurting and they knew that, you know, with all the boycott movements and everything that was happening, they would lose business in the long run. And so because of that, we know it works. And so to get to that stage where we can go to Coca-Cola, Starbucks, whatever it is, and be able to influence that change, we need to mobilize. Because we can have an information hub anywhere. You can Google whatever you want at any point in time, but the hard part is organizing. And so we want to solve that. I think that is what we do best. And so the vision for this is three parts. We wanted to create a platform that you could get any information. You could, you know, figure out what you need to do with any brand product and so on from there. And then we wanted you to, you know, find all alternatives. We want to support the Muslim economy, the local economy as much as possible. Um, because that's a, at the end of the day, it's like, why are we relying on all these conglomerates when we have so many brilliant Muslim businesses that just need a platform? And other ethical businesses that need a platform, right? Um, and I want to like mention this before we actually jump into this slide really quickly. But if you think about it, like we have a lot of power. We have a lot of Muslims around the world. Imagine what we could do if we united, and we could, you know, create an entire Muslim economy that you know we need as a, as a, as a community together. So let me just jump into boycott really quickly, and then we'll get into the fun stuff. So what is boycott, and why do I keep saying boycott instead of boycott? Um, Boycat is, is our application. We created an application that allowed you to do the three solutions that we kind of are tackling. The first is we wanted you to be able to scan barcodes, search for products, um, and even find alternatives within our application. So, you know, we, we, the, the back story on this is really cheesy, but post a hajjah one night, had a dream where I was arguing with someone about why they bought Starbucks. And in that dream, they were just saying, like, you know, I didn't know, there's no alternatives, and, and it, was, it, was, it was really weird, because I was trying to, like, I was trying to be peaceful post the like I was trying to like nap till Fajr. But I had this dream, I woke up and I texted my buddies, uh, one of them's right here actually, and I was like, dude, we need to make this. And I didn't know what we were gonna do or how we we're gonna do it, but you know, we just had to build it. And with, with that, we wanted to create, you know, the easy system for you. That it was so effortless that you had no excuse not to boycott and then find the alternatives. The second thing is, is that we knew that people shop online. We know that, you know, if we could just tackle just a hundred million people we could change where $455 billion a year is being spent. And a lot of it is being spent online. And so that's why we also threw in an extension that works in a couple of parts. So it's not at a point where we think it's amazing. We think it's really good, but it's not amazing. Where you can go on Amazon right now, and our goal is to get you off Amazon in the long run, trust me. But we can go on Amazon, and the first step is let's make sure you avoid the bad products. So we'll recommend you all the good products you can buy instead. And then, in the future, inshallah, we're working with some brands and companies right now so that you can start buying the good products on their websites instead of Amazon. And then we're working on partnerships. So that way you have a discount to buy it from their website versus Amazon itself. And that's how we're kind of working throughout the entire application itself. So you can get on mobile or web. And we'll have the link soon, don't worry. Um, but not even that. We want to 
create a community feel. Because at an individual level, it's really, really hard to boycott. It's really, really hard to feel like you're making an impact. But if you are able to do it as a community, it makes it so much easier. If you can hold your friends accountable for things that they buy or, and how they shop, then you have, a, you, know, you have a very good influence as a team. So we actually created a team system. And it, it's the beginning of our entire gamification aspect, actually. Because we want to make it almost a game where it's so fun to boycott that if you don't, it's kind of shameful. Like, whenever you go to Starbucks, you kind of give someone a side eye. Like, that's our goal. Like, we want you to kind of, like, feel bad going to those places. We want you to feel good and make it feel fun where it's, like, exciting to buy the right things. And then the last thing is we want to educate you, too. Like, our goal isn't just to tell you what to buy, what not to buy, and that's it. But we want to educate you on the impact, the financial reports, the, the, the details behind everything BDS-related. Um, and fun fact, you might be thinking, why don't we just use BDS? Today, this afternoon, we just signed a contract with them where we're the official partner, so you have to listen to us. Um, so the last thing is, is that we really want people to be able to contribute, because we don't want us to be the sole reason or sole like voice in this application as a whole, because everyone does have a very powerful voice. Everyone has the talents and you know, the capability to contribute to the cause, and you, know, you can contribute. You can contribute through products, you can contribute through creating content, you can create, contribute through like, just sharing information, like the more people that see this and the more people that get this in, the hand, in their hands is, is technically Sadiq on your end because you're helping people not support the occupation and not support the genocide of our people, right? And so when it becomes a household name, inshallah, like one of our goals is we were talking to people from the Burma Rohingya community, we were talking to people from the Uyghur community, we were talking to people from the Congo community, and we noticed that a lot of them were very much like, I wish I had a voice that the people you know, are rallying around the Philistine stuff is. And so while Philistine is our main primary cause at the moment, we know that, inshallah, when there's a ceasefire, when things are starting to be rebuilt, there are other causes that need our attention too. And so we could take the 10, 30, 40, 50 million people that we do have and apply them to other causes. So we can not just support the stuff that's going on in Philistine, but we can shop cleanly and ethically to support stuff in other causes in other parts of the Muslim world. And even go into climate change, go into other things that people care about. Because our goal isn't as Muslims, should be to care about everything. We can't just care about only if people are Muslim, but anyone that's oppressed, anyone that needs our help, that we should support them. So hopefully like your cat. It's actually modeled after my cats. Um, but you'll, you'll see that reoccurring theme everywhere. But we'll have another barcode later on, and we'll have a little demo for that too. Um, so actually, how do you know this works? Well, we've been able to track that we've divested around $85 million um, since January 7th. And that's only from one-time purchases. So. What we did with this and how we kind of did the, the science behind it was we couldn't figure out someone's spending habits, so we want to take the lowest estimate possible. So if you bought Pepsi three times a week and then you avoided it once, we only count it as a one-time purchase that we avoid with you know, our different APIs and databases that we use. So we know that our floor is at least 85 million, but we've probably helped out you know, upwards of $200 million of divestment. And so we don't want to be disingenuous and not figure that out, but we have things in our app now where we can start figuring out your purchasing habits and we'll get a more accurate number soon, but just know that as a community, we can get this. And so imagine what happens when you get in the hands of more than, more than just, you know, the almost million people we have on our platform right now. Um, but fun fact, fun fact, really quick side, side quest um, story. Back in March, when we were really launching, we got viral the first time, we had around maybe like 100,000 people on our platform, and we've divested around like $10 million at that point in time. Uh, we were on the news, and really thankfully we were on Al Jazeera, we were on BBC, like, you know, all that fun stuff. And it was great, um, but this is more of a personal thing that kind of, you know, led us in the direction that we're in. But I got called into my work office basically the next week, and they basically gave me the complaints that I had no technical skills, no product growth mindset, and I wasn't helping the business achieve its goals. But fun fact, I had more monthly active users than they did at that point in time. Um, so it was pretty funny. But they parroted that for the next three months, and then I was fired on the spot without any official PIP or any severance or anything like that. And I found out that the CTO and the VP that was really complaining to me were, um, you know, strong pro-occupation people. And at that point, you know, Hamza, like, it was truly, truly a blessing in my opinion because the next day I tweeted about it and it went viral. Um, and when it went viral, I had people like Chris from LaunchGood, Harun from Rocket Money, these top Muslim CEOs across the world, they offered me a job on the spot. And it was truly a blessing because I knew I made the right decision at that point in time. I prayed Istikhara and I decided not to take any of them. Um, and I, I told my, my buddies and I told my, my family and stuff, I was like, I'm not going to take a job. 
Because I know if I fail in like three, four years, I can call these guys and get a job at any point in time. But the fact that they fired me, and that means they knew that I was doing something that was impactful. Um, and it would, it would harm them if I was to continue this. And so I made a pact with my guys, and you know, we decided that we'd go on this full time, and we could see how much we could actually do. And the amount of work we've accomplished ever since has been you know, incredible compared to where we were at. Um, but that, yeah, this is a quick side story. But this is like, everyone has to sacrifice a little bit, and this is my part of my sacrifice. But alhamdulillah, it's really a blessing, because like, you know, I wouldn't have probably quit until later anyways. So it was great. Allah chose me to do that in the moment. So our vision for this entire thing is we want you to shop ethically, effortlessly. So just don't even think about it. Just buy everything on our platform. <laughs> um, and, we, and that way you know it's supporting things that you, know, like you care about. Because a lot of our businesses and brands we're trying to work with, they're trying to donate percents to like Gaza right now anyways. So it's like when you're buying something, when you're spending money, might as well you know, donate a little bit on the side as well too without having to spend any, anything extra. So this is kind of the future, and this is where we want to go. We want to make it so fun that you don't think about, like have to make the decision of like, oh, do I have to buy this or not? It's more of like, let me just learn, let me just keep going this, in, in this approach where I can you know, have fun while I'm doing something good for the community. So we're going to introduce things like quests where you can go out and actively shop in different areas, try out different stores in your local areas, and you know, just support your local economy as, as a first step. The second step is we're going to create a profile where it's so, much, it's so social, where you and your friends should feel like it's a place to be at. It's supposed to be a place to hang out at. So you don't have to go on Twitter and see all the, like, the degenerates you know, posting and arguing and stuff. You can go on Boycat instead and see all your friends and see how they shop and find different, you know, for, for the sisters, any, any makeup hauls or for the brothers, any grocery hauls that your wives tell you to go buy. Um, you know, there's a bunch of fun stuff that we want to do there. We want to reward you for this. And so within the application, you can earn treats for doing good things. And one of our goals with these treats is to partner with businesses. So you can use those treats to get rewards in real life. So you can go to local coffee shops and exchange them for, you know, for free coffee. And you support them and you support, you know, not supporting genocide. So win-win, you know? Um, I just want to show you some of our current numbers because this is like the fun part. This is actually slightly old, um, but we've, we're growing exponentially fast. And we know that whenever we promote products and brands, we have a really high like, CTR, which is like click-through rate. Because people care about this. People care about supporting Muslim businesses. We just have to create the platform for it. So we know we're validated on that. And so we actually aren't going to be a nonprofit. And this might be controversial to some, but I think it makes a lot of sense for us. And I'm only going through the business plan because I want you guys to be you know, fully transparent on what we're doing and how we're doing it. Because our goal isn't actually to make a ton of money. Our goal is to like, support the local economy and build it as much as we can. But to do that, we have to be able to grow really, really, really fast. And with that, we need to create a business model. So I'm going to be completely upfront and transparent about it. Um, it have you guys heard of Honey, the extension? I'm just going to assume the nods are yeses. I only see like three nods. Um, but Honey, the extension, is basically an online application, like extension to your web browser, where if you're shopping, it gives you coupon codes or even cash back. And like, there's some small rewards as you, as you shop online. It gives you discounts. So we're going to create the exact same model, just with you know, pro-Palestine and like pro-Congo, pro-Uyghur, whatever it is. We want to support the Muslim businesses. Um, and then the second thing is we want to promote Muslim brands and, and you know, businesses and products. So if you know any Muslim brands and products that you do think deserve to be platformed as like alternatives, whether it's like a new Coca-Cola alternative, whether it's a Starbucks alternative, whatever it is, like let us know. Like we want to platform them. And then we want to give you discounts. So if you, you know, we do have those brands and businesses, the more we have, the more users we can drive, which means the more discounts you guys get as a whole. Um, and of course, like Islamically, we want to make sure we give back, right? So 2.5% of our revenue will always go to charity. And Ramadan will always go, will double that um, as a whole. So jumping more into the fun stuff, this is the team. You can actually see one of them here. But myself, you know, I guess it's X data science, yeah. I was working at Linktree and then True Car before that. And then we have our friend Maher and Ahmed, both from, one from the Bay, one from SoCal. And they both are working in the engineering field as a whole. So let's actually go to the fun part of this presentation. So I want you to open up your apps. Hopefully you all have Boycat by now. I gave you an opportunity to do so, download this in the past 10 minutes. But I want you to get on the app. I want you to download it. And I want us to create one we, we launched Teams a week ago. And we, we didn't market it at all. But the reason for that was because we wanted to pilot it with some of our you know, fan favorites slash like our personal favorite you know, teams. And so I piloted it with one with MCC because I knew it was like one of my home, like Masajid. And I wanted to give you guys a first chance to like, use it before everyone else. And that way you can get your divestment numbers higher than everyone else first. Um, so that'll be the fun part. 
But I want you to get on, get onto your profile once you, once you create an account, whether it's the Google, Apple, um, email sign in. If you have issues, let me know. Um, we have a guy that can fix it right away. <laughs> but, um, but hopefully you don't have any issues and hopefully it works out as, as needed. But go to your teams, click see all um, on your profile and then browse the, browse the team section. You can even just type in MCC and you'll, you'll find the MCC East Bay team that, that should load and show it. And hopefully the Wi-Fi is good here. Um, if not, then I don't know. I can't help you there. <laughs> But um, I want you, to, want you to join the team. And then that way we can, you guys can be the first pilots of the team, inshallah. And as, as the team grows and as, as the team kind of expands, we'll create a storefront for MCC. We'll create links for MCC where you guys can host your charities. We'll have forums. We'll have team leaders that can, you know, really direct the movement in a certain way. So, you know, maybe next month we'll focus on, you know, boycotting Coca-Cola or something. And then the month after that we'll say, everyone, we're going to go support this, this local, local coffee shop, this Muslim run one instead. Um, and just keep moving in that direction as a community because the way you spend money as a community speaks a lot about yourselves. Um, and so we want to empower you guys to have that platform where you can do whatever you need to do. Because um, our goal isn't to, for you to just plug this app whenever you want to shop or whenever you just need to, you know, scan a barcode, but, you know, use this to build a community and, you know, shop ethically as a community as a whole. Um, can I get a raise of hands of how many people have joined the team so far? Nice. That number is too low. <laughs> so I want you guys to, you know, hopefully jump in on that. But I'll even give you an example of why it's important. So I want you to scan these two barcodes on the screen. Hopefully you can do it. If you can't, it's because our Zoom feature is kind of bugged right now. Um, if not, then uh, good luck. <laughs> it's not working. I don't know. Okay. All right. So I apologize for the Zoom feature being bugged right now. We'll fix it in the next update, inshallah. But, um, I don't know. Um, we're going to skip this slide because it's too embarrassing at this point. Um, but if you want to contact us, if you want to invest, if you want to just chat about business or you know anything on that end, um, just email me. I think that's the easiest way to do it. Um, I respond to everything, even hate emails. I've gotten so many death threats over the past like seven months, eight months. But um, alhamdulillah, it's like, it's a blessing. So, you know, it means I'm doing something right. So I would love to chat about anything, but I do want to open up the rest of this. Um, I want to keep it kind of brief and just open up to like Q&A, chats, whatever it is. So I don't know if there's a system for that. Jazakallah <laughs> for that beautiful presentation. So before uh, I open it up to the room, inshallah, we have some viewers online. Inshallah, a lot of viewers online. And one of the questions came from I think a author. Um, I stopped advertising my books on Amazon on October 7, 2023. Author, what are some other ways for authors to self-publish their books? Um, truthfully, I wanted to say use Boycat because <laughs> we're going to create the platform for you to be able to advertise and for you to be promoted in that way. We want you to be able to do that. Until we actually fully have it built out, and you can already see some of our features built out on the Discover page where you can kind of, you know, take a look at it um, and, and see promoted businesses and products that we already have. I think using social media and using other, using social media is probably the best way because you know that there's a large pro-Palestinian, pro-Muslim community that wants to support us. It's just a matter of if you can get platforms. So I think things like connecting with us is really important, connecting with other individuals that have platforms. They're willing, a lot of people are willing to do it for free for this stuff. Like they're not, willing, they're not going to charge you an arm and a leg just to be on there. I have a couple of friends from Malaysia that I'm visiting soon that you know have their own books and, and so on from there, and they're solely getting all their sales and promotions off of you know social media. Um, I know that's probably not the best answer because we just don't have our marketplace built out yet. But inshallah, soon as long as you stay in, in contact and you stay up to date, we'll be able to promote you as well inshallah, in the future. Thank you for that. So go ahead and raise your hand. I'll bring the mic to you. Brothers, let's start with us. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, great presentation. So I had a question. Uh, you had mentioned that uh, sometimes when people scan something, they know that, you know, for example, that item is boycotted. So, you know, I store it in the back of my mind. So next time I go to the store, I don't buy that thing. Uh, but I think you had mentioned briefly how you're going to continue tracking that uh, behavior or like know that could you expand on that like how are you guys going to do that John? yeah so there's a few things that we're working on the first is we're obviously going to have the qualitative surveys built out in the application um, just so you can you can start earning treats and rewards for answering how much you actually buy how much you divest and, and move in that direction 
The second is we're planning on, you know, working on applied integration so we can track your spending habits and give you scores and points. Um, we basically have a roadmap for the next 24 months that's going to be built, inshallah. And um, we want to, you to have a hub for where you shop, you understand exactly everything you need to do. And so with this, we want you to, you know, integrate your credit card, integrate your bank statements, and then we can start giving you scores and, and tracking your, your spending habits. And then from there, we can optimize exactly how much we're divesting as a whole. So, you know, we do a three months pre, three months post, and we can figure out, you know, the rest from there. Thank you for the question. All right, brothers, let me hand over the mic to you. Assalamu alaikum, brother Adil. Jazakallah khair for the presentation. So you mentioned about the, um, the cashback similar to Honey. Um, when can we expect the plugin for the browsers and what kind of browsers you are going to start with first? Is it, is it, will it be available for Chrome and Firefox both or uh, what are the extensions that we are looking for, inshallah? Awesome. Thank you for the question. It's a great question. Um, we actually have our extension already live on, on Chrome and Firefox, and we're working on Edge and Safari right now. Um, but it's version 2 of version 4. We need to get to version 4 where we have the cash back, we have the rewards. But right now, we can just show you what not to buy and what to buy. Um, and we also flag different websites like Wix.com that you should be avoiding as a whole. Um, cause, you know, and we have reasons and sources for pretty much everything. Because we want you to be educated and, and learn to trust us. And so the best way to trust us is you know, with sources and reputation in that sense. So I would say give us six months and we'll have it fully ready. All right, sisters, and just raise your hand. I'll bring the mic over to you. Or those that are watching at home, inshallah, just type your questions in the chat box and we'll get over with Dr. Awad. Asalaamu Alaikum, Adil. Swadil is actually my neighbor. Uh, yeah, so I, I was actually interested, you mentioned <coughs> promoting local business because, I mean, when we boycott something, we, we could actually at the same time buy it from a Muslim business. So for example, when I, suppose I want to buy, say, a jelly, I mean, normally people will go to Walmart or whatever, say, if, uh, and without thinking, just buy one. So I said, okay, I, I'm going to buy it from a Muslim business. So I went to my local, like, Rahma Market store and and asked him, do you have butter and jelly? <clears throat> so I, I bought it from them. So I think as like the whole Muslim community, as you mentioned, the buying power, we have not actually utilized it. That is why all our Muslim business, they are like this tiny 10 by 10 square foot store or 10 by 20 square foot store and they are not increasing because we Muslims are always divesting our money everywhere without any. So, so how do you uh, propose to like help the Muslim, uh, local Muslim business? Great question. It's not like, when, I, when he first walked in, I smiled for the first time. That was because of him. Um, it was great to see him. So um, alhamdulillah, it's great to see you as well. But how we're planning on doing it, how we're localizing brands and local businesses is that Currently, when you boycott something, we have global brands and businesses that you can choose instead. But we want to support the local economy as much as possible. So we actually have a feature within the app. It's called Zoomies. Um, it's basically our Yelp, but it's called Zoomies because my, when we were building it, my cats were running around at 2 a.m. and were, like, they were sprinting and they were zooming. So I was like, it just makes sense. And so we called it Zoomies, but it's Yelp, uh, just us. And what we plan on doing is showing you locations where you can buy different things and then giving them storefronts where you, they can showcase products and showcase prices and discounts. So that way when you do look up things like jelly or you, know, you start looking up products you want to buy, you get recommendations for things you can buy and where you can buy them instead. So we plan on doing it. It's just a matter of can we build it as fast as we need to. Um, but inshallah very soon. Hopefully that answered your question. Zoomies is in there right now. It's, next to the scan button on the bottom left. Okay. Are we have one more question here. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for the presentation. Some of us who work or manage so-called halal businesses, we're still struggling with, you know, idea of having, looking at the shelf and we have items that are, you know, I see them in a boycott. So when you don't have an alternative brand, example, Coke, Sprite, 7-Up, these are the you know, simple drinks. So what do you do? Just not sell them, even though we have customers, regular customers looking for them. Go the extreme way, say we don't serve them anymore. So what, 
you know, like I looked now, Coke doesn't have an alternative, or Pepsi or Coke Zero. So what's your advice? I have a three-part answer to this, and hopefully you can choose the one that you want to go with, because my goal isn't to tell you what to do or not to do, but rather give you the information I have, and then you can make a decision. The first answer is, we're, the reason we partner with BDS and we sign a contract with them to become the official partner is we wanted to create a tiering system. Because it's impossible to boycott 1,000, 2,000 brands. Like it, the reality is that it's so intertwined with our life that it's very, very hard. And so we created a tiering system, which is basically a formula that you can apply to any company and tier it into tier one, tier two, and tier three. Tier one are companies that, and brands that are directly complicit in the occupation or you know, harming the Muslims and like the Muslims and non-Muslims in Philistine. And then tier two is major parents and major subsidiaries and you know, major investors that are involved in those companies. And then tier three is just minority investors or minor, minor like, you know, infractions and so on from there. But they're for people, and we allow people to choose the capacity they're able to boycott with. Some people are very fortunate and they're able to spend the extra money, they're able to drive the extra 30 minutes to go buy at a place, but they know that they can boycott everything. Other people, maybe if they live in like Nebraska, um, they might just not have the option to you know, buy, buy the next thing and avoid both like Walmart and something else, right, Sam's Club. And so sometimes you have to make sacrifice. So you choose the lesser of the evils. In regards to things I've noticed with other companies that have been able to drop things like Coca-Cola or Coke Zero or Pepsi, is that Allah provides, like, always. Um, and it happened to me, right? Like, I didn't have a job. I had to, I'm taking care of my parents. Like, what am I going to do? Like, you know, I didn't have anything going on. And I was funding everything off my own salary. And I was making sure, like, my, my buddies would never have to worry about finances. And so I look at us now, like, we're almost done raising. And I can pay them. And I can provide for myself and family and so on from there, just because I made the right choice. And so when I look at my other friends' brands that have been able to switch, swap them for Salam's Cola, Gaza Cola, Pastime Cola, they're all based in like the UK and like, you know, Salam's Cola just brought a distribution center in the US. Um, people, people are thriving. Like we just went to Habibi's in uh, Fremont and they have Salam's Cola. They took out all Coca-Cola products and they're able to put it in their stores. And so I know that if you really, really want to find it, and we may, not, we may be working on it right now, and it's not perfect right now. We're not saying that we're a perfect application. We're taking our steps, but we took the first couple of steps, and we need your help to you know, keep running. Um, is if, you can, if you can drop and you make the right intention, I'm not saying you specifically, I'm saying you know, business in general. If, if they take the right step, then Allah will provide, and we'll always do our best to provide you the right answer so you can make the right decision very easily. Um, and you know, when, you, when that happens, like it, you get promoted more and more. Like, I don't remember the last time I took a picture of like a fridge with Coca-Cola in it, but today I took a picture with Habibis with it, with Salam's Cola, and I posted it on my story, and it got hundreds of views or thousands of views, whatever it is, right? Um, and that's that's free promotion for people. People care about this stuff, especially now. Um, okay, and then I think the last part is, you just have to do your best. Um, you can you do what you can, and you avoid the worst things, and then from there I think like. Life will get easier. I will make things easier, and then we're we have your back at the end of the day. Like it's not a single effort, and if as long as like even if you just like let us know, like we'll put your we'll put the business on our platform. If we want to promote as much as we can, because um, our goal is to you know help our economy out. It's not to like for us to make money, but hopefully that answered your question. Um, um, my question is, does this app allows you to scan barcodes at the grocery store and tell you if you should have boycott a product? If not, do you think an app like that will exist in the future? Did you... Wait, wait. Can you repeat that? So... Does this app allow you to scan barcode at the grocery store and tell you if you should boycott a product? If not, do you think an app like that will exist in the future? Yes, yes. Okay, so amazing. I was making sure I heard it right. But yes, you can scan any barcode right now, and it'll, t it'll tell you the information. You can also search um, if you need to. It's on the bottom right, right next to your profile screen. So you can, you can scan. Um. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Um, I was just wondering, is there a way to get like businesses or Muslim businesses to start like avoiding products 
um, cause there's so many Muslim businesses and there's so many people that are still promoting a lot of products that we should avoid and boycott. And when you do bring it up to them, they get very offended. Um, I really spoke up to a lot, um, throughout the year, like throughout the year and be like, Hey, you know, we shouldn't be supporting this, but is there like any kind of an output that we can put or like, I don't know. Yeah, um, I, I think the reality is is it's the power of numbers, and you you speak the language I speak. They won't get offended when they see their sales drop, right? But that's when they actually make a change. So I think part of the reason that we started the communities and the teams is that you can go to these businesses with everyone that signed up and joined a team right now, and then you know spread it to all your friends in the local community, and you'd be like, look, we have a thousand, two thousand people that want to buy at your store, but they won't because you know you have X, Y, or Z. Or if you don't take it down, then these guys won't shop at your place. Um, so one of our goals is, is for you guys to have that you know, influence and power as well, too. Yeah, so one of, our, one of our goals within our app is for us to get good enough where you, we can do that. Um, so we want to be able to showcase all the alternatives that you have available in your local area that you can get instead of this. So you know, inshallah, I can't, I can't give you a timeline, but hopefully in the next month or two, we'll have a better system where you can showcase to these companies, like, look, if you just avoid this, you can get X, Y, or Z, and we can provide a link to it, we can provide sources to it, we can get you in contact with them, whatever it is. Um, just give everyone the tools so it's, it's basically like effortless, like they don't have to do any work. Um, I don't know if that answers your question in, in full, but I think our app is the first step. And from there, with community, and from there, as we add alternatives and we promote these businesses, we can make it more accessible to all these local businesses as well, too. Other questions, sisters? You know, I have a question for the other, uh, you know, it's about the staying power of the Muslim consumer. It seems pretty fickle, just being realistic, because um, when we had the cartoons about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in France, we were boycotting French cheese for a while, and then we're back onto French products. And then the Uyghurs, for a moment, we, we were thinking a lot about the Uyghurs, and then after that, uh, we're back to buying Chinese products, they, based on the news cycle. Do you think this is, has lasting power, where after a while we just kind of get used to this and we're, we're not really having this on our radar for the Muslim, average Muslim consumer? Um, I think truthfully, 95% of people boycotting do it for a trend. And so that means that when the news cycle ends, it ends. And so the reason that we created the application and the reason that we're trying to gamify it and reward you for making the right decision is so that we break free from the news cycle. The moment that you can get rewarded and the moment that you can continuously you know, see cash back, you can see discounts, you can see alternative products, you can see the change happening in real life. You don't rely on, on CNN or Fox or whatever it is to tell you, oh, there's some boycott going on or something. It's, you can see it within an application. You can see how much divestment as a team you guys have done, as a community, as a global population have done, and you can see the companies that are affected. One of our goals isn't to actually wreck every single company on the platform. It's can we get these guys to switch their stance? Can we get Coca-Cola to switch their stance? Can we get Starbucks to switch their stance? Can we get McDonald's to switch their stance? Eh, but you don't want McDonald's anyways. But you know, other companies in general, can we get them to switch their stance? And then when you start seeing that real life through the application, you're more and more inclined to use the application because you see your effects that are happening. You see that your individual impact means something. And so I think when you see your impact and you see it real time, you don't rely on a media cycle to care about something anymore. You start pulling it out because your friends are doing it. You, you, you're pulling it out because your community is doing it. You're pulling it out because the local businesses you're supporting are thanking you for coming in instead of avoiding it. And so I think in the end, we can, we can break the media cycle reliance. Um, it'll take time, but inshallah, I think it's, a, it's one of our goals. Inshallah. Kind of piggybacking on that, so the Uyghurs, uh, you can't go on Amazon and find something that doesn't, it's not really made in China. So you mentioned the Uyghur community, the minority group in China that is oppressed by the Chinese communist government. How about them? How, are they on the platform? Will they be on the platform? And how possibly can you take on the, the awesome might of the Chinese, um, I mean, economy on Britain, really? Um, I, I think it's multifold again. So it is going to be on the platform, inshallah. It's one of our main campaigns we want to include. We're not gonna force you to join any campaign, but we're gonna allow you to choose and, and be a part of whatever you wanna be a part of and where you, what you value. Because um, our goal isn't to force you to do anything. The, the second part of that answer is 
it's going to be really hard, but when we do create our you know, entire marketplace where you can just hop on and your mobile, your, your, your phone, your, your desktop, whatever it is, whatever you buy there is going to be safe. And that's going to be so maybe you spending a dollar or two extra that's supporting local businesses, supporting you know, a business in like Sweden, supporting a business in like Japan, whatever it is. It's going to be you having to make it a little bit of a sacrifice until we get to a point where we can create a comp competitor to things like Amazon, to like Capital One, you know, all these giant marketplaces. So it'll take time. I am not saying it's an overnight solution, but it'll, it'll happen over time. Okay. Let's keep going with the questions, brothers and sisters. If you have your, if you can just raise your hand. All right, thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, so forgive me if you already answered this. I came a little bit late. But I'm curious, so do you have like a plan to extend this beyond just the Muslim community? Because I think, you know, if you want to make, you know, a really big difference, um, it's important to extend just beyond us, right? Because, you know, there's millions and millions of others. Yeah, so great question. We actually don't ever brand ourselves as a Muslim app or a product. We want to brand ourselves as a humanitarian global app. Um, and we do are going to be supporting other causes that are not just Muslim-centric. Because our goal as Muslims should be to support anyone that's oppressed, anyone that needs help. And so we do have plans for expanding past that. Because the more people we get, the more people we can end up supporting Muslim causes as a, as a byproduct, right? So, inshallah. Okay, more questions, brothers, sisters? I can see some yawning, so I don't know if we want to do too many more questions. <laughs> no. Mashallah, your presentation was just so thorough and the app is just great. We downloaded it a few days ago. My daughter was saying we can't shop, we can't buy anything really. Inshallah, we can fix that soon. Um, hello, assalamu alaikum. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the affiliate marketing portion of it? And the, like you had three, yeah. yeah. So that was our business plan, and it's how we're going to go about it. Um, basically, how it's going to work in the future is a lot of these companies that are on Amazon, for example, they pay Amazon around 30% just to be on the platform and get a sale. And so one of our goals here is to reduce the cost for them. Because why would you pay Amazon 30% to have your product sold? If we can figure out a way to sell your product for you for cheaper, then you pay them less, you give our users a discount, and they no longer have to pay the extra $2, $3 to buy that product itself. So for example, if there is a, a new, like, I don't know, Coca-Cola product you want to buy on Amazon for some reason, um, Coke pays them 30%. Maybe Salam's Cola, to be on that platform, pays them 30% also, and that's why their prices are like $3 more than Coca-Cola as a whole, because it's just distribution right now. Until we support them to where they get big enough, where they can reduce the cost, it's not feasible for them to give a cheaper price. So if we can put them on our platform, charge them a little bit less to be on our platform, get a cut of the sale, and give you a discount, it makes more sense in our eyes. So that's one of our business models that we plan on you know, expanding ourselves and sustaining ourselves. So we don't charge you ever to use the app. Our goal is to keep it completely free for everyone that wants to learn, but really just charge businesses to be promoted and help them grow as much as possible. So did that answer your question? First of all, um, thank you. Uh, but I, I tell you what, uh, the app is quite confusing for me. And somebody will have to, we should, somebody should demonstrate it for us to understand how to maneuver it. That's one. Secondly, I'm going through this somehow, I really got onto this list here. I don't know how, but that's why it has to be explained here. Um, it has pretty much everything on earth listed here. So I feel sometimes that could be quite overwhelming for any person to look through it. I think we'll have to, maybe there is it, uh, idea would be better if we also have the opposite, like what are the better businesses to buy from? And then we can choose from them rather than go through this hundreds of, I mean, this is just on and on and on and becomes quite overwhelming. So we just hope that, you know, there are also categories and the businesses that are actually maybe overall Muslim businesses, just let's say those, or those people who you would say is neutral in, in maybe a lot of categories. I feel that probably is helpful for me. No, it's a great, great point. Thank you so much for bringing it up. 
Thank our you. next update in the next week and a half will have categories as a whole. And we'll also have our tiering system. Like you said, there's too many companies to, you know, it's overwhelming. And so what we did is we created the tiering system with BDS official. Um, and so we'll have three tiers. <coughs> and so, you know, tier one only has like 40 brands because they focus on primary camp, like primary offen offensers, I guess. And then tier two will go into like a couple hundred more and then tier three will have everything. Um, so I 100% agree it's overwhelming and that's why we created a tiering system because we want to make sure you don't get fatigued when you boycott, when you, when you shop. Um, the second part in regards to the businesses is that that's what we're working on. We're trying to get as many brands and businesses that we know support what we care about. So any connections to any brands or brand owners or whatever it is, that would be great because that way we can show you where you can shop instead and where you can, you know, buy things you need to. So we're working on it, inshallah, and I know that it's confusing, but bear with us for a little bit longer, inshallah. Is this on? Yeah. Okay. Assalamu alaikum again. Um, is this similar to the Yuka app? That's the one that's for like cosmetics and other products. And then like if you were to scan something, then it gives you options. It basically gives you a whole detail of the um, product, like what's good, what's not good, and then it tells you our alternatives. Is that kind of like the idea behind it? It's a very similar idea, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, we plan on integrating a lot of the, like the health concerns and other yeah. things as well too, very soon, inshallah. Um, okay. Just not a priority because right now we're focusing on... Okay, I think like yeah. when she talked about like how will there be alternatives, I think mm. that's yeah, yeah. what you guys are yeah, planning, we're, right? We're working on it, yeah. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. You've been very patient, brother. Um, I had another question for you, which is, uh, there are a lot of ideas and ways, like you mentioned, your roadmap is, is really big for the next like two years, right? So how do you prioritize what to work on and choose like, you know, uh, what to focus on and what areas to grow? Yeah. This is more of a product question, which is great. Um, the way I think about it right now is we have the capability and the influence to market to millions of people right away. But our goal here is for you to keep using the app. And so, that way we can educate you, and that way we can, you know, work with brands and showcase that, look, people are still using this. And so our first step right now that we're working towards and what we're building is really the retention aspect. How can we get you to use this app more than once a week? How can we get you to use this app continuously? And so we're trying to gamify as much as possible. So that's one of our priorities. The next priority from there is then we can market and expand into different markets around the globe. Let's tackle the U.S., let's tackle the U.K., let's go into the Southeast Asia, let's go into the Middle East, and so on from there. And then what we want to do is we'll start prioritizing on what is the most important thing that people are like facing the problem with. So the first problem was information. The second was alternatives. And then the third is where do I buy stuff now? What can I buy instead? How can I buy it for cheap? What can I, how can I just do it so effortlessly that it doesn't ruin my, my normal flow? Um, so that's kind of how I think about building the next thing. And so there are a thousand ideas and thousands I want to build, but it's how many people can I impact the most right away? So let's think of the outcome. There are a lot of yellows, I'm just saying. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a Friday night, everybody's tired, but we're, we're very interested in what you're saying. The, the, the yawns are not, not, not that, it's just the Bay Area life. Asalaamu As Alaikum. Uh, first of all, Jazakumullah Khairan for the whole effort. Um, well, it was a little bit late, uh, so I'm not sure if this has been addressed in your presentation or asked, but what, I was just curious, in order to make this whole thing a success, you have to have some revenue. Uh, what, how are you earning something off a, is, is some of the transaction gonna go to you or what will sustain the organization and make it a financial success? Yeah, so we have three business opportunities available. One is the affiliate marketing model, which is we get a cut of every sale that we promote. Um, Honey did it really well and they were acquired for $4.5 billion. And so we know the model works, we just have to copy it. The second is we're technically a giant advertiser platform. We have a million eyes on our platform, and so that means you know people want to spend money on ads, and so we can charge businesses for ads. We can charge them for product ads, and then the third is the in-person stuff that we're working on as well. So we can you know exchange treats or points for in real-life purchases, and then we start getting cuts of that and lead generation from there. Um, so we have three business models that we're working on, and so we'll start with the first and then keep expanding the, from there. Okay, sorry, uh, I've got one more. So one of the, the, the questions that the sisters were asking really, 
it seems like basically the whole idea behind this, it's a, it's a political aim, but to make it, to enable the whole process, you have to be able to successfully find substitutes for major brands and let's say major consumer items. We've talked about a lot of the recreational type, you know, consumption, coffee, sodas and whatnot. Um, so are you basically trying, is, is part of the strategy going to be to be a, essentially a substitute platform for an Amazon or something like that? That's a long-term vision, yeah. Um, if we want you to be able to do the shop and buy whatever you need, electronics, clothes, food, whatever it is, daily stuff, and just, you know, not have to think about where your money's going, because you know it's going to be a good spot. Thank you. Uh, uh, so I guess like it seems like you know you kind of want to take in a business model maybe you're saying honey or potentially like something like Instacart where I can just kind of get my groceries from there right so that's probably going to be pretty hard to do right you know Instacart's a huge company and you know they've had quite a long journey with a lot of investment but have you considered potentially like buying goods in-house and baking or kind of taking on the role of a distributor so you have like a select role of products that you endorse and know are well and you know, handling that personally, especially in like high populated areas? It's definitely been an idea. I think we floated it around when we first started. Um, but getting to the details and like the actual like technicalities and logistics of fulfillment and distribution is really hard. Like you gotta be someone special to be able to handle that. And I don't think we have the capability at this point in time to think about it. In the long run, inshallah, if we're able to generate, you know, money and we're able to hire the right team for it and probably go in that direction, it's definitely open, but I can't promise it. Um, fulfillment's really hard. I'm sure you know, some people here, way more experienced than me, know about it. My question was, uh, can you see where most people are downloading the apps? Are they in the Middle East? Are they in Europe? Are they in North America? Where, where are they downloading the app from? The US is our highest population, followed by the UK. Then now it's Kuwait, because we just had an event in Kuwait like two weeks ago. Um, but then also, Indonesia and Malaysia is really, really high. Turkey as well, just because we were on the news there. And then Egypt and Qatar are the next hubs. All right, we can keep going. Questions, brothers and sisters, those online too? Anybody raise their hands? Okay, I'm coming over to you, sister. So I go, um, my question is how do you balance like the boycott list because I think that's a pretty long list with alternatives. So like how do you select like boycotting today and if I'm going to boycott that product, how can I still get the perfumes, cosmetics, groceries that I'm looking or interested in? Are you asking this on the individual level or are you asking it as a community level? Community level, just because to scale I think to like balance the fatigue that comes with the long list of products that need to be boycotted. I think people are still at their core, like invested in capitalism and consumerism and still need to buy those products. But if there aren't good enough alternatives or alternatives that match, people will seldom choose the alternative, right? Yeah. If they aren't given a good enough list. Um, and I think that's the driving force between boycott being successful or not successful, in my opinion. So I'm wondering how you balance that as you continue to create a longer list of products, but also um, hopefully a list of products that we can choose instead of, I don't know, Coke or, I don't know, a ton of cosmetic brands at this point as well. Yeah, of course. I think that's a great question, actually. So the first part is we want to create the tiering system so that you can figure out what is the worst one to buy and what is technically, like, avoid but like it's okay and then things that are just like you know it's fine if you buy it it's not going to actually impact the economy too much and so that's the first step is boycott within the capacity you're able to the second step is it relies on the community to submit these alternatives and like create work with like for us to get in contact with influencers with mute beauty brands and so on from there like one of our things that we're working on right now is a partnership with Huda Beauty because we want to get discounts for all these products they have they're very pro-Palestinian and we know that at least it's a better alternative to like things from like you know your general Sephora haul as a whole. And it might not be perfect, but it's you know it's a first step from there. And then as we see the success with that, we know other brands will start following suit. So it's a process, but I think it involves doing things to your capacity. Uh, 
All right. You just raise your hand, brothers, sisters. Those watching at home, inshallah, if you have any questions, you can type it into the chat box too. We'll get the question answered, inshallah. So, divestment works, boycott works. You wouldn't be doing this otherwise, right? <laughs> I mean, so, I hope so. <laughs> so let's let's reiterate that point. It works. It actually does work. It does right? work, and we we can we are starting to see the results. I think today, actually, I just we just posted an article about how um, Nestle started seeing their year-over-year -year sales drop like crazy, and they're starting to get worried. And the CEO even mentioned the words boycott in the Middle East, and so we know that they are affected. They're very very aware of what's happening, and a lot of these companies like Google, Nvidia, and so on from there, they don't mention the word boycott in their financial reports, but they mentioned a drop in something in the Middle East region. And so we know that it's, it's being talked about. They know that they're you know, being watched on it. We know Starbucks' CEO has, has you know, got fired because of it. We know that you know, things like McDonald's sales is plummeting. We know that these companies are suffering. It's just a matter of, can we outlast them trying to think that they can you know, survive this little trend? And so if we beat the trend, we can beat them, inshallah.